So, hi everyone, my name is Axel Antoine. I'm a PhD student at the University of Lille in France, in the Loki Research Group at INRIA, and I'm co supervised by Sylvain Malacria and Javier Casier. Today, today, I'm going to present the work I've done last summer during my master project. We work on the end to end latency, which is defined in an interactive system as a delay from the physical action of a user to the feedback. Here, on the video, the end to end latency can be seen as a delay between the finger and the eye icon. In indirect pointing, the end to end latency can be observed as a delay between the user action of the mouse and the corresponding movement of the cursor on the screen. Latency is important to consider because it is present in all systems and has an impact on user behavior. First, latency can be perceived on touch devices as low high 5 or 10 milliseconds. Here, on the video, there is only 10 milliseconds and we can clearly notice the latency. Then, research has shown that latency degrades user performance in indirect pointing from 50 milliseconds. This is problematic because end-to-end -end latency on desktop computers can be as high as 120 milliseconds. Finally, the more the task is difficult when targets are smaller or moving, the more the latency has an impact. Typically, Windows buttons in macOS are about 2 millimeters wide. To sum up, the latency is a critical point in our current systems that we have to reduce. There are two approaches to reduce the end-to-end -end latency of a system. The first one is to reduce by improving the hardware. For example, like in this video, by building a homemade touchscreen couple of one millisecond of end-to-end -end latency. Globally, the hardware approach needs dedicated, expensive, high-frequency input-output hardware. Moreover, this approach has not been tested with real UIs explain complex information. The second approach is then to compensate for the end-to-end -end latency by software. This means that we try to predict what will be the next position of the cursor in the near future. Actually, software compensation techniques have only been designed for touch input. As these techniques are designed for touch, they base their prediction on position derivatives to compute the future position from the touchscreen input. In consequence, the prediction is noisy and delayed. Noisy because the position is divided by a delta time and delayed because we use the past events. We chose to focus on software compensation. To sum up the different problems, there is a critical latency in the during pointing that impacts user performance no technique has been designed to compensate latency in the direct pointing. Using the, the derivatives of positions for prediction implies inaccuracy and delay. To solve these problems, we propose Turbo Mouse, a compensation technique that uses an accelerometer embedded in the mouse. We design our prototype with the assumption that the acceleration collected from an accelerometer is more precise than a computed one from the mouse velocity and with less delay. We compare the two acceleration profiles and saw that the acceleration collected from the accelerometer, here at the bottom, was less noisy and more precise than the acceleration computed from derivatives, here at the top. This result confirmed our assumption that and reinforced our interest of Turbo Mouse. This photo shows the full hardware setup of Turbo Mouse. The accelerometer is embedded in the mouse and connected to an Arduino Leonardo. The Leonardo and the mouse are connected via compute, um, to the computer via USB. The prediction is then compute on the computer side on events reception. Our software prediction technique is composed of three steps. The first step consists in merging the events received for each mouse input, we associate the closest acceler acceleration event. The second step consists in applying the transfer function. In indirect pointing, transfer functions are used to apply a control display gain between the physical displacement of the, of the mouse and the screen displacement of the cursor. 
In our case, the same gain for velocity is applied to acceleration. The last step is the prediction itself. Turbo mass is based on a simple second order Euler equation. First, we collect the velocity measured by the mouse optical sensor every delta time with the hardware acceleration to obtain a more accurate velocity. Then, the predicted position can be computed within a future time interval that we call compensation using the current position of the mouse, the corrected velocity, and the current acceleration. To validate Turbo Mouse, we connected two studies. The first studies consisted in evaluating the quality of the prediction of Turbo Mouse by comparing it to other predictors. The second study consisted in evaluating the user performance with Turbo Mouse. Let's talk about the first study. We compare the performance of Turbo Mouse in terms of prediction accuracy to other predictors in two steps. First, we collected data from 10 participants. Then, we compared the prediction of all predictors on the same data. Let's focus first on the data collection. Participants were asked to perform a drawing and a pointing task. The drawing task consists in dragging the mouse cursor over different shapes displayed at the center of the screen. And to validate a trial, participants had to press on the red circle, follow the shape while dragging, and release in the rear circle. The pointing task was a two-dimensional pointing task with 13 targets positioned along the circle. For each trial, participants had to select a target of a certain width and locate it at a certain distance from the initial position of the cursor. A trial was valid when the target was correctly selected and only trajectories between two successive targets were collected. The design of the experiment used two transfer functions and two tasks with their own design. The drawing task used four shapes, two sizes, and two directions of drawing, clockwise and counterclockwise. The pointing task used two distances, two sizes, and 13 targets. After collecting trajectories, we compare the prediction of Turbo Mouse. It is important to note that since nothing has been done in indirect pointing compensations, we chose to compare Turbo Mouse to touch-based predictors. We then compared Turbo Mouse to five state-of-the-art compensation techniques based on derivatives from the mouse events. The prediction was computed on all trajectories with four values on compensations. Finally, for each compensation technique, we compute the prediction matrix introduced by Nansal and his colleagues. This matrix estimates the probability of appearance of visual side effects by comparing the real and the predicted trajectories based on geometric properties. First, let's talk about the lateness metric. Here, the black cursor is, predict is the predictive position and the gray one is the real position. The lateness metric measures how much the predictive point is behind the real one. Turbo mouse revealed to be better on lateness metrics compared to the second order Euler technique for a compensation above 24 milliseconds. This suggests that the, that the hardware acceleration provides better predictions when compensating for higher levels of latency. In all cases, the double exponential smoothing technique seems to be better about prediction. The jitter matrix measures how the <laughs> sorry, the jitter matrix measures the amount of noise of the predicting pointer positions. Turbo mouse revealed to barely increase with the compensation, whereas double exponential smoothing technique is very sensitive. This is a critical metric for indirect pointing because unlike with touchscreens, the mouse cursor is not hidden by the finger. The jump metric measures how often the cursor jumps away from the trajectory from time to time. The results are similar to the jitter matrix where Turbo Mouse has an advantage over the double exponential smoothing technique. Finally, let's talk about the overanticipation. The overanticipation matrix measures how much the predicting point is in front of the real one in the direction of the movement. 
The higher score for over-anticipation for tubal mouse can mostly be explained by the elastic effect. Here is a small video of the elastic effect present in turbo mouse. When the mouse suddenly stops moving, the predictive cursor here in green was already too far in the direction of the prediction and it snaps back, resulting in an elastic pan effect. To sum up the first study, turbo mouse revealed to have promising results in terms of prediction, less critical side effects like jump or jitter where the best predictor is very sensitive, over-anticipation of the prediction when the mouse stops, and finally, using an accelerometer for compensation revealed to be a good trade-off between prediction and side effects compared to derivative-based methods. Let's see now if tubal mouse improves user performance. We then ran a second experiment to evaluate if our compensation method improves user performance in pointing task. Twelve participants were instructed to perform the same pointing task as for the first study. Clicking outside the target was considered as an error. The error rate was displayed and we asked participants to respect a 4% error rate. The design we used was about three artificial latencies, four latency compensation, three blocks, two target distances, two target width, and nine targets to select. For the following results, the latency values mean an artificial latency added to the base latency of the computer, which was about 40 milliseconds. Our results showed that 16 and 33 milliseconds of compensation significantly improved performance for 33 and 66 milliseconds of additional latency. 50 milliseconds of compensation significantly improves your performance when 66 milliseconds of artificial latency is added. The best case scenario is with the maximum latency and 33 milliseconds of compensation where tuba mouse realizes an improvement of 16% of movement time. About participants' feedback, three participants reported that they explicitly restricted the velocity of their mouse to avoid side effects on high levels of latency. Only two participants noticed that the elastic effect occurred mostly when they suddenly stopped moving and then tried to smooth their movements. For 16 milliseconds of compensation, no one reported any side effects, but on the contrary, found the cursor more reactive and smoother. Finally, five participants reported to prefer having a higher amount of latency rather than having less delay but more side effects. To sum up the second study, Jibber Mouse can improve target acquisition time in polling task. Most importantly, we observed user performance improvement without side effects for 16 milliseconds of compensation. And we also observed the user performance improvement for 33 milliseconds and 15 milliseconds of compensation, but with side effects. To conclude, I presented Turbo Mouse, the first latency compensation technique specifically designed for indirect interaction. Turbo Mouse combines the velocity measures by the mouse optical sensor and the acceleration reported by an accelerometer embedded in the mouse for a smoother prediction. Our first experiment showed that tubal mouse appears as a good trade-off between latency compensation and side effects that might be noticed by the user. Our second experiment showed that tubal mouse increases user performance without side effects for 16 milliseconds of compensation. Our technique, can our technique can easily be integrated in current systems by putting an accelerometer on the mouse PCB. About limitations, tuba mouse introduces an elastic effect for higher compensations. It also needs a stable connection at 1000 Hz, which is still only possible when the mouse is wired. 60 milliseconds of compensation is not nothing. At 60 Hz, it's a complete frame. For gamers, for example, where each gain of performance is important, Turbo Mouse could be very interesting with one frame on advantage on your enemies. It can make the difference between life and death. That was my talk. 
Before the questions, I just want to tell you that the Loki Research Group uh, in Ria, uh, in Lille has two PhD offers uh, open and we are looking for excellent candidates. So if you are interested in working in France in a very nice city with a lot of beer, uh, let us know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, nice work. Um, I'm Scott McKenzie from York University. It's nice so to great you. to see empirical studies <laughs> still <laughs> nice being done. You. The last few years at Kai, I thought we were getting overtaken by the designers. But, uh, um, I, I see a little bit of a missed opportunity in your second user study. It was clearly a Fitz Law ISO conforming task. Um, you only reported results for mov movement time. You yeah. said participants were motivated to maintain the 4% error rate, which mm -hmm. they may or may not have done, but uh, why did you consider using uh, reporting and calculating throughput as a dependent variable, which would, of course, combine the variability with the movement time? Um, we first uh, focused only on the in improvement of movement time because uh, the only interest in our paper was um, uh, to focus on the the putting an accelerometer inside uh, a mouse. Mm -hmm. um, also, we, uh, as we re reviewer, ask first to to include uh, fits analysis. But this is not the most important part in our paper. We wanted only to focus on the accelerometer hardware side. So, yeah, we could um, we could compute everything about uh, the fits environment, but we didn't. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you probably already have the data. It's just one extra little step to calculate throughput. Uh, we didn't calculate yeah. uh, the throughput, but we could. Yeah, okay, just a suggestion. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Fabrice Mitchell, prefer networks again. So uh, you, if I understand correctly, the, the prediction models are based on derivatives, mostly what you, when you're trying to predict the, uh, to reduce the latency. Right? Our technique? Yeah. Uh, we're not using the reverse. Well, you're comparing to you're comparing yeah. to. Uh, First, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's there's some prior work, some recent prior work that has uh, used uh, neural networks, uh, particularly LSTMs, uh, yeah. to to anticipate, and they have pretty good results for touch. Okay. I know they haven't done that for for the mouse, but uh, it would be maybe a fairer comparison <coughs> if you if you try to implement those models as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, even uh, our um, prediction equation are very simple. So we could use neural network or any uh, other formulas to compute a better prediction. But as I said just before, uh, we want to focus on the other way acceleration. And of course, with a full acceleration profile and a full velocity profile, we could use any formula to improve the prediction, like neural networks. But it would be interesting to see if, um, do you need the accelerometer if you have these neural networks? They might be able to figure out the, uh, the like automatically smooth the, the curve, and so maybe the accelerometer won't be needed if, if you use those models. I don't know, maybe, it, maybe it's better to have an accelerometer. Yeah, actually we use uh, one neural filter to, to smooth the acceleration uh, profile, but why not uh, on other things? I hope it answers your question. Thank you.